Okay. Um, this next one we're going to look at creating what we call some pivot tables and histograms. Now, if you can incorporate these skills in this um, in this particular piece of work that you're going to be doing, then you will be getting high marks. You will be um, going into band three for numeracy and digital literacy by showing some of these these skills I'm going to do here. Okay, so. Pay attention, have a go at this afterwards, and then when you come to do your controlled assessment, come back to this tutorial, you will be allowed access to it, um, and look to extract useful data um, from larger sets of data using these techniques. What I've got here is I've selected, or I've got 40 um, pieces of data on house prices there, okay? So I've collected 40 pieces of data, and I've put them into this table. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to use something called a pivot table to extract that information and then turn that pivot table into a histogram, okay, which is a level three um, way of displaying data. This kind of stuff could also be used in your project next year for gaining numeracy marks within that. Okay, so first thing to do, you just need to click on one of the prices, the top one there, go to the insert tab and pivot table. Again, I am using, um, I think this is Excel 2016, so it might look slightly different in the version that you, you may be on, but all the features are there, you just might need to just look in a slightly different place for them. If you notice, it's pretty clever, I should have done this, it picked up the table, which we wanted to do is highlighted that table there, and we're going to put this, what they call pivot table, in the existing worksheet. So it's going to go somewhere alongside here. You can stipulate with the top left part of it starts by clicking in location there. And I want it to start in G1. And just click on the X there and click OK. And you get this pop up here. Now, again, I think in, in 2016 they've improved this somewhat. So I'll show you how it works for um, earlier versions. You don't quite get this on them. Okay, so what we want, first of all, is to have all the prices from that data table put into the into the rows down here, okay? So what you do is the pivot table window should be open on yours, the pane there, just drag that down into rows, and you get all these here. That's just basically replicated them in, in, in a sort order. Um, what we want to do is group them, like we did earlier with the estimated mean. We want to group them into useful data. So... We right click that and go to group. Right click group. Now it gives us a starting point, which is the lowest value. You can alter that if you don't like the numbers as they are. You could make it a little bit more even than that. And the end point is 850,000, the most expensive item in there, the most expensive house price. And it's going to increment them by 100,000, which seems a reasonable amount. Click OK. You can see we've got group totals there. All we need now is some values to go in the side here. And uh, Excel is pretty clever. But down here with values, you can click on that and it'll do that for you. Now, if you want to double check that that's ac that is accurate, it's got a really neat feature, okay, that you can use in um, Excel. If I double click on that value there, it opens it up in a new tab. I was on this one. And look, it's taken the, um, that group and put them into a separate table for me. Remember before when we were doing the copy and paste down here, okay? I know I showed you that first, but I do need to, we need to build up in levels. Um, that will make that for you so you can use that data in a different sheet. Once you've used it, you could actually delete the sheet there because we don't want loads of them and it'd be there. So I could do it for this one, 10. There you go, there's the 10 items in that range there in order. So nice little feature that Excel uses there. So we've got this pivot table now. We can change it to make a histogram. Okay, so I'm going to close this window down. Now we've got that out from there. And we just click on any one of those values here. Go to insert. And we're going to create a column chart. Okay. That's like Excel calls it in just a 2D one like that. So we've got this here. So we've got a little bit of editing to do for... For this particular chart okay i'm just going to make some room a second and move that into there just so we can see 
what I'm doing. So these will be on here, so you can get rid of those by right clicking and hide all field buttons on charts. So they go. Get rid of some other junk. We don't want this over here. Don't know why you put it on there. We can get rid of that on, on there. Now we want to turn this into a histogram. Histograms don't have any gaps in between. So we need to do a little bit of formatting to sort that out. So I'm going to right click this and go to format plot area and this will pop up um, in here. At the moment I'm selected, my selection is this, this square here. What I want to select to make changes to is the bars themselves, the columns. So if we click on that you'll see it changes and you get more options in here. If you go to the last option there and have gap width, if you reduce that right down to zero, they'll go next to each other. Now they, they are a little bit um, you can't really discern. If you want the same colour, you've got a couple of options here. Click back on them again here and go back onto the fill paint pot there. You could add a border. So I'm going to do solid line there and you get solid lines which separate it. I quite like going on to here and doing vary colours by point and you get those colours in there like that. So it's more like a histogram now. I'm going to increase that. So now I can start to do some useful stuff and make some changes. So total is not a great title. So something like um, um, house price distribution or frequency or even house prices um, for Manchester. Like that. Put that there. Um, so we've got a better title on there. Now in this version of Excel I've got, um, there's a plus button comes up. Now I can't remember if that's the case on the version you are. If not, it will be up in the um, chart tools at the top up here, okay, for you to do some of the stuff that I'm going to show you here. These are only touch, you know, um, sort of aesthetic changes. You don't have to do them, but it, it does look, um, it looks quite neat. So I'm going to click plus here. And I'm going to put data labels, so it's going to give me the numbers there. Now I've got the numbers on the histogram there, which is what a histogram is like. I can go with the x-axis and I can delete that out. So I've got that there. I know I'll access some axis titles, so I'm going to get rid of um, this one on the side here because we don't need that one, but it just puts it there automatically for us. So delete that away. And in here I'm going to put... Um, House prices, and I'm going to show that they're in sterling, put pounds on there, like that. Okay, so we've got these uh, these on here. Um, one thing I'm not really keen on is I don't like the, the data labels with the dashes in between them. Now I can go in and manually change those, but one little method you could do, another little skill, is highlight all those. And on the Home tab, if you go up to Find and Select, and... Um, if you go into replace, okay, find what, I've put dash, and then replace with space, up, space, two, and then space on there. Let me show you what I mean by that. I'm hitting the space bar, up, space, two, space, because we need the spaces to separate them out. I'm going to go replace all, make seven replacements. You'll note this. There we go. Changes are made on there. Changes are made here. We can widen those. We've now got that. You can can manipulate it even more. You can do that if you want those in there. You could double click on the labels, um, making changes, you know, to fonts and other bits and pieces. So if we think about the evolution of this, we've just had four big list of 40 numbers, and this could be 100 numbers, 200 numbers, because the pivot table would work it out just as easily. Um, and now we've got some really useful data that we can analyze in a report. Okay, we can see that uh, the obvious thing from this is it's like sort of bell distribution here that, that it's round about in the middle, you know, 290,000 up to there is where the vast majority of our house prices um, sit for Manchester. And like I say, that can be now cut and pasted out into, um, into a report showing on the mark schemes and on what we would be looking at. This is, this is very good high-end digital literacy skills and numeracy skills. All you need to do is practice this tutorial, work out which bits to press, and when you can't remember, you can always go back in and watch um, the tutorial for that. Okay, thanks very much.